In this video, I'm going to add the ability for our players to shoot a weapon using the Niagara effects that we created in the last video. Since this is a multiplayer game, I'll also show how to set up replication for the weapon. I'll be building off the Flybot project I've created in previous videos. There's a link for these down below, as well as a link to all the project files on GitHub. The first thing we'll do is bind a new input to shoot the weapon. Let's open up Visual Studio and then open FlybotPlayerController.h. At the end of the class, we'll declare a new input action called shoot action. In flybotplayercontroller.cpp, we'll create this action at the end of the constructor. We'll allocate the new action, set it to be a one-dimensional type since we only care if it's on or off, and then bind this to the left mouse button. Next, in flybotplayerpon.h, we'll declare a new input handling function called shoot. In flybotplayerpon.cpp, we'll go to the setup player input component function and then bind our new action to our new handler. For now, we'll only have a trigger when the action is started, which means when the mouse button is pressed down. A little further down in this file, right above the tick function, we'll now define our shoot function. For now, we'll just have it log that shoot was called with the pawn's name. If we build it, run it, hit play, and then start clicking the left mouse button, we'll see that nothing happens as expected. If we go to the output log, we will see the log lines that shoot was called. The next thing we'll do is create a new actor that will represent the shot flying through the world. We'll use the Niagara systems from the last video for when it's flying through the world, and also when it hits an object. I tried creating the new C++ actor class in the editor, but it didn't work since I recently upgraded Visual Studio to 2022. To get around this, we'll create the new class files manually. Let's close the editor and Visual Studio, and then open up our project directory in Windows Explorer. Let's go into the source directory, then Flybot, and then right click and create a new text file. We'll name it flybotshot.h. We'll then duplicate this and name it flybotshot.cpp. Let's go back to the root of our project directory, right click on flybot.uproject, and then generate Visual Studio project files. When we open up the solution in Visual Studio, we'll now see our new flybotshot files. Let's open up flybotshot.h and declare a new actor class. We'll add the constructor, a sphere component that will be the root component and also be used for collision detection, a Niagara component to hold our visual effects system, and then a projectile movement component to make this actor fly through the world. In flybotshot.cpp, we'll define the constructor and set up all our components. In here, we'll allocate our sphere component and set it as the root. We'll then set the radius to 25, and then set the collision profile to block all dynamic. This means we'll generate hit events and not fly through objects in the world. For the Niagara system component, we'll simply allocate it and attach it to the root component. Last, we'll allocate the projectile movement component, set it to use a speed of 20,000 units per second, and then disable gravity so there's no drop when you shoot the weapon. Next, in flybotplayerpon.cpp, let's update our shoot function to spawn one of these actors. We'll first get the transform of our body component, which is the static mesh of our pawn. We'll grab the rotation of this transform since we want the spawned actor to use the same one, and then we'll calculate the translation of where we want to spawn the actor. For this, we'll take the translation of the body and then add a new property for the shooting offset. We don't want to spawn the shot actor at the same location as the body since it would immediately collide with that static mesh. Instead, we want to spawn just outside the body, which is why we need to add a shooting offset. We have to rotate this offset before we add it to make sure it's pointing in the same direction as the body. We then spawn the new actor in the world. We want to be able to spawn classes that are derived from Flybot Shot, so we add a new property called Shot Class. Later on, we'll create a new blueprint that derives from a Flybot Shot, and then set that as the Shot Class. We then pass in the translation we calculated to make sure it spawns in front of the body, and the rotation to make sure it moves in the direction the body is looking. In Flybot Player Pond.h, let's declare the new Shooting Offset and Shot Class properties. For Shot Class, We'll use the T subclass of template to make sure the value is always a class derived from a flybot shot. Back in flybotplayerpon.cpp, let's set some default values for these properties in the constructor. For shooting offset, we'll add 300 units along the x axis since the pawn faces the positive x axis and we want it to spawn in front. And for shot class, we'll use a flybot shot since it's the only one we have so far. At the top of this file, we also now need to include flybotshot.h. Last, since we're now including Niagara header files and using components from them, we need to include the Niagara module in our dependency list. We do this in flybot.build.cs, which lists all our dependencies. Let's build it and start up the editor, and then open up our Blast folder. In here, we'll right-click, create a new Blueprint class, and then choose a flybot shot as the parent class. 
We'll name it Blast BP and then open it up in the Blueprint Editor. And here you'll see all the components we added in our C++ class. Select the Niagara component, and then for the system, choose Blast Fly FX. You can now see the effect that will play when this actor is flying through the world. Compile and save this, go to the Player folder, and then open up Player Pawn BP. Under here you'll see our new Shot class property, and we want to set it to Blast BP. Compile and save this one as well. When we hit play and start shooting, you'll see the actors spawn, shoot out, and play the effects, but when they hit something they just stop. This is happening because the projectile movement component we're using is detecting when we hit something and it just sets the velocity to zero. We're not actually telling it what to do when we hit something. To fix this, let's go back into flybotshot.h and add an onHit callback function. This will get called when one of our shot actors hits an object. In flybotshot.cpp, we need to bind this to the onComponentHit delegate of our collision component inside the constructor. In Unreal, delegates are used to bind functions to events, and when those events happen, the delegate will call all functions that were registered. At the end of this file, we'll also define our onHit function. When a hit happens, we'll log which actor we hit and then call destroy, which will remove this actor from the world. If we build it, run it, and hit play, we'll now see our shot actors getting destroyed after we shoot them and they hit something. If we go to the output log, we'll see when the shots respond and also when they hit something. The next thing we need to do is have our other Niagara effect play once the shot hits something. To do this, let's go back to flybotshot.h and add a new Niagara system property called hit system. This will be the effect that will play when the shot collides with another object. In flybotshot.cpp, let's modify our onHit function. If the hit system property is set, we'll spawn an instance of the system at our current location. At the top of this file, we need to include Niagara function library.h, which contains the spawn function that we're now using. Let's build it, run it, and then open up our blast bp blueprint from earlier. We'll see our new hit system property, and we can set it to blast hit fx. Let's then compile and save. If we hit play and start shooting, we'll now see our hit effects playing where the shot collides with something. Just for fun, I opened up the blast bp blueprint, clicked on the movement component, and then set the speed to 200. When testing, you can now see the shots flying around very slowly. You can fly into them to generate hits, and also watch them more closely so you can make sure the special effects are doing what you want. Right now, the shooting rate is determined by how quickly you can press the mouse button. I'd like to add a limit of how often you can shoot, and also add the ability to just hold down the mouse button to fire at the max rate. To do this, let's open up flybotplayerpawn.h and add two new properties. B shooting is a boolean that determines if we're currently shooting or not, and shooting interval is the minimum amount of time that we allow between every shot. Down below, we'll also add a private variable called shooting last time. We'll need this along with shooting interval to know when we can fire again. In flybotplayerpawn.cpp, let's add a default value for shooting interval in the constructor. We'll use a value of 0.2, which means we can shoot five times per second. Down in setup player input component, we'll bind another action for our shoot action. This one will use the completed trigger event. Now when our mouse button is pressed down, it will trigger the started event, and when our mouse button is released, it will trigger the completed event. In our shoot function, let's cut our spawn actor code and replace it with a new line of code that simply updates our B shooting boolean. If the action value is greater than zero, which means the mouse button is pressed down, it will be true. Otherwise, it's false. Now down in the tick function, we'll paste that spawn actor code along with some other logic that determines how often we should be shooting. We first save the current time in the now variable for easy reference. Next, we check if we currently should be shooting, and also if enough time has passed since the last time we shot. If this is the case, then we update shooting last time to our current time, and then log and spawn the actor like before. When we run this and hit play, we can just hold down the left mouse button and it'll continue to shoot. Even if you try to press the mouse button faster than our allowed rate, we'll still be limited by that shooting interval. The next thing to take care of is the multiplayer aspect of shooting a blast. As you can see, it's only visible on the clients that are doing the shooting. It's not replicated to the server or other clients yet. One way to do this would be for the client to tell the server it wants to shoot. The server would then spawn the blast and replicate it down to all clients, including all the movement as it flies through the world. When the blast hit something on the server, it would get destroyed and then destroyed on the clients. This could lead to a lot of replication traffic, especially if you have a lot of players that are shooting often. Another way to handle this is to only replicate if a player pawn is currently shooting. The server and all clients would then spawn, move, and destroy these actors independently. This would lead to a lot less replication traffic, so we're going to take this approach. Keep in mind that no matter what solution we use, the server will always be authoritative in what object a particular shot hits, and what action should be taken. 
The visual effects happening on the clients are only an approximation of what's happening on the server. To implement this, let's open up flybotplayerpawn.h and add the replicated specifier to our B shooting property. This tells the server to replicate this property down to all clients when it changes. Up above in the header file, we need to override get lifetime replicated props so we can tell the actor about this new replicated property. In flybotplayerpawn.cpp, let's define this function. We'll first call the parents version of the function, and then we'll call do rep lifetime condition with our new property. We call it with a simulated only condition so it's only sent to clients who are not controlling the pawn. The controlling pawn won't need to be updated since it's the one that's updating the server. At the top of this file, we need to include net slash unreal network dot h for the do rep lifetime macro. We now have everything added so the server can replicate B shooting to all the simulated clients, but now we need a way for the controlling client to update the server. To do this, let's go back to flybot player pawn dot h. Let's add a new RPC function called update server shooting. In flybot player pawn dot cpp, let's define this function. We need to add the underscore implementation at the end of the name since this is the function that's run on the server. We'll call this from the client just above in the shoot function by calling update server shooting with the new value. This is everything we need for the client to tell the server when B shooting changes. When we run this in the editor, we can now see that our shots are replicated from the client to the server and then back to the other client. After testing this for a while, I notice that our shots don't get replicated when we get a little ways away from the other client they then start reappearing when we get closer to the client again. This is due to a feature in Unreal Engine's replication code that calls out actors when they're far enough away. To see how far this is, let's open up our player pawn blueprint, go down to the replication section, and look at net call distance squared. For some reason this value is squared, but when we take the square root, we can see it's 15,000 units. If we take a look at how our level is laid out, we'll see the rooms are 40,000 units apart. I'd like the shots to travel at least the distance between two rooms, so let's update the call distance to be 40,000 units. We'll do this in flybotplayerpawn.cpp inside the constructor. We'll be sure to square the 40,000 units. I'm also going to update the shot spawn logline to include if we're the client or the server. I'll also add if we have a controller attached. If the pawn doesn't have a controller, it means this instance is a simulated proxy and it's being controlled by another client. I'm also going to update the on hit log line to include if we're the client or server. If we hit play with the output log visible in the background, and then shoot, you can see the shot spawned on the controlling client, then the server, and then the simulated client. If we move 40,000 units away, which is just past the middle of the small room, and then shoot, you can see the shot only gets spawned on the controlling client and server, not on the simulated client. This is because the other client is too far away to receive the replication update. When clients get too far away from each other like this, they essentially disappear from the other client's world. This is why the most recent shot hit the pawn on the server, but it didn't on the client. It traveled right through where the other client pawn should have been, and instead hit the far wall. This could be very confusing in gameplay, since these shots could hit something on the server, but not on the clients. Let's update the shot to automatically destroy after a certain amount of time or distance. To do this, let's open up flybotshot.cpp and add initial lifespan equals 2. This is a feature already built into actors that allow them to self-destruct after a certain amount of time. With a lifespan of 2 seconds, multiplied by 20,000 units per second for the speed, this actor will be destroyed after traveling 40,000 units, which is the same distance we're using for our net calling distance. If we hit play and we shoot up close, it still works. If we move more than 40,000 units away from the client like before and then shoot, you can see the shots are spawned on the client and server, but they never hit anything, just as expected. The shot actors are destroyed before they're able to hit anything on the server and the client. If we move up so we're just within 40,000 units of the other client, you'll see the shots are spawned and hit on both clients and the server. So we've now implemented a projectile weapon. Another common type of weapon you'll find in games is a hit scan weapon. This is when there's no travel time when the shot is fired. We could implement a hit scan weapon in almost the same way. We would just do a line trace and play a visual effect, rather than spawning an actor with a collision component that moves over time. We could always switch this later, but for now, I'd like to see how the projectile weapons work out for this game. In the next video, I'll add a health property to the pawns and have them take damage when they get hit by one of these shot actors. I'll also be adding a heads up display so we can see the health on screen, and also add a crosshair so we can see where the pawns are shooting. If you have any questions, be sure to ask in the comments down below. Thanks for watching.